friends and welcome back to Strange Rebel Gaming. I'm Brianna White and today something super fun and exciting that was live streamed on my Twitch channel this past weekend. A Final Fantasy 7 remake cast Q and A. As in we took all of your questions and we answered them. Featuring John Bentley, the voice of Barrett, and Susie Young, the voice of Yuffie, and me, the voice of Aerith. We all got together thanks to Streamily. Now, if you don't know what Streamily is, it's kind of like the next best thing to a convention meet and greet. You order a print, kind of like this one, and then we do a live stream where we sign the print so that you can sort of feel like you're there. At least it's the next closest thing, and it's a lot of fun. Now, if you follow me on social media, you know I already did one live stream signing, my first one, this past Friday on my Twitch channel, and it was so fun, and there was so much hype, and even a little friendly trolling on stream's part, not on mine. And um, anyways, it was, it was so fun and exciting, and I couldn't even get to all of the signings, so we had to schedule another one. So I wanted to let all of the YouTube peeps know that we would be doing another signing this coming Friday on my Twitch channel at 12 p.m. Pacific time. And you can get more details on that on the Streamily site or on my social media as well. If you want to visit the link and you can see what prints are available, like this one or like this Aerith character art, you can click the link in the description or you can visit streamily.com slash FF7 remake and that is the number seven. Also, these prints are available, my Aerith cosplays, of course, and there are some more up there as well. And I know Susie and John have pages of their own too and are doing their own live stream signings as well. So please do check it out if you're interested in getting your print signed live and then Streamly ships it, I think, anywhere in the world, which is really super cool. And now, without any further ado, let's get on to this voice cast q and I hope you enjoy it. Hey everyone, welcome to the Final Fantasy VII Remake voice cast Q&A. Here we have our wonderful guests, Susie Young, the voice of Yuffie, Hello. and John Bentley, the voice of Barrett. Hey y'all. And I, Brianna White, am the voice of Barrett. So we've got, we've got three of the main cast here today. It is a very exciting, very exciting event. How are you feeling today, friends? You go first, Susie. That, I'm feeling great. I'm so excited. It's my first time having a Q&A with the main cast. Uh, besides, there was one with Max, but uh, yeah. Finally got to meet the great Barrett. <laughs> <laughs> For the I'm first the time. great Barrett, the great Yuki. <laughs> I'm good. I, I'm, I'm excited about this. I get to hang out with y'all on Saturday. It's good. And I get to see folks. I, I know people are like, Breezy told me how to, taught me how to do this whole, I can see who's looking thing. So I'm excited. And Adam Kudo wrote Breezy. He's like, I'm watching. I've been excited about this all week. So, oh, I'm that's I'm really sweet. It's 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 definitely been a long time in the works, but this isn't our first time working together. Susie, like you said, you were so nice enough to join us at SRG Con for a panel with Max Middleman as well, which mm -hmm. was so fun. <laughs> that was one of the best panels at SRG Con, if I'm being real. Oh, awesome. Yes. Heck yeah. And I love getting <laughs> to know you a little bit more, especially yes. because we probably would have gotten to know each other way more if, you know, the world wasn't all shut down. <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's a crime that we haven't all gotten together. <laughs> it is, but hopefully there will be more opportunities. And in yeah. the meantime, opportunities like this. But John, this is your first reoccurrence on my channel in a long time. I know. That's that's, uh, that's a crime too, honestly. We're playing the original, so it's good to be back. Yes. I'm sorry I couldn't make the first one that Susie was on. It was like busy, crazy. <laughs> but we're here. Yes. yes. So... If you are a longtime viewer of Strange Rebel Gaming, you know that John joined us for the original gameplay of Final Fantasy VII, the 1997 game that we started, and that was such a fun time. I mean, people people love that series so much. They really want it back. Oh, okay. And uh, I'm like, <laughs> it's a lot harder now. Like the idea of like renting a little studio somewhere and like getting everyone oh. together, it feels a lot harder now, right? Oh, it's different. It's very different. <laughs> yes. I'm in somebody else's studio right now. 
It's true. Yeah. You're at Streamly Studios, <laughs> aren't you? Yeah. And it looks good, <laughs> huh? It's fancy. Oh, it's so cool. It's wow. so cool to not like not to be in a studio, not know what the heck you're doing, and somebody else can tell you. That's why <laughs> when I was in your studio, it was brilliant. I was, <laughs> I was doing it, and you told me, so it's all good. Well, we felt very lucky to have you. Well, it was fun. It was an honor. Speaking of Streamly, look at that transition. Look at that segue. <laughs> what a pro you are, John. <laughs> uh, speaking of Streamly, the whole reason that we've gotten together today for this amazing Q&A is because, first of all, who doesn't love a reason to get together with these beautiful faces? Second of all, we're all doing Streamly signings. A first for some of us, a first for John, right? First, look at me. Look at, hey. me look at that all collage, stuff. by the way. Can you can you hold stuff. that up to the like, camera? It's gorgeous. Stuff. Wow. Like, all this new <laughs> stuff. Look. All this. Yeah, this is <laughs> no, those are gorgeous. I love I them. Like, Ooh, I should have done streaming years ago when you told me. Let me see if I have I'm one. I'm exaggerating. Mine. Yeah. Uh, this is already signed, but. Ah. Oh, it's oh, so cute. Oh, you can move yes. With Fat yeah. Chocobo. We love Fat, Fat Chocobo. Chocobo. So awesome. And then and then there's one I would like to see. That one. one's nice. so stunning. That's the bomb. Yeah. <laughs> really cool. Gosh. You and all yeah. make me look bad. I'm like, no. my, my signings are just like, not that shots. good. What are you talking about? Are you no, me? I'm telling you, I'm so self-conscious about my autograph, my signature. No. I haven't what? seen it, but I'm sure it's beautiful. Then you don't know. <laughs> I'm sure it's beautiful. I know it's beautiful. <laughs> You're Aerith. You're a flower girl. Exactly. And I can't even draw a flower. <laughs> so embarrassing. That's funny. Um, so, yes. Yeah, so for those of you who don't know who are here and you don't know what Streamily is, it's basically enabling all of us to get autographed prints to you wherever you are in the world. You know, especially when the world shut down because of that which will we would not speak. <laughs> <laughs> um, because when, when we couldn't do conventions and we couldn't meet you all in person, but people really wanted to, you know, get a gift for their friend or get a print for their wall or what have you, Streamly enables us to do that all from where, where we at and where we're at in the world and then get it to you where you're at in the world. Um, so if you want to check out the prints that are available, Streamly has put together a Final Fantasy VII Remake page where you can see all of the prints available from all of us. And the link to that is streamly.com slash FF7, the number seven, and then remake. And the link for that is also going to be dropped in the chat anytime you type in exclamation mark Streamly. And I got to say, their prints are beautiful. I mean, I love mine. I think they're beautiful, but y'all have some beautiful ones as well. I love your Barrett collage. Like, I can't oh, stand crazy. it. It's so oh, pretty. So cool. I'm looking at it going, ooh. And this is the ooh. first time I've seen it, like, in my hands. And I'm like, ooh. It's, just, it's, it's really cool. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. So we're going to start with the, oh, I guess. I just got a notification from Zoom. That might, oh, that oh, might cause problems. I'm going to ignore it for now, and we're going to pretend that that's not, a, not an issue. Okay. <clears throat> but, you know, this is a live show, and sometimes we have to make adjustments on the fly. And if that has to be done, then that has to be done. Yeah. I mean, we can do it. We're a party of Aerith, Barrett, and Yuffie. So that's right. Anything. That's right. <laughs> we can do walking, anything. Baby, we're good. <laughs> Avalanche, don't you know? With Wu Tai. Right? <laughs> You know, I got this materia hungry little one down here. We're good. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so then what we are going to start with is <clears throat> a little bit more <clears throat> in-depth introductions. So I mentioned that John Bentley is the voice of Barrett, which most of you already know. But what you maybe don't know is that John Bentley has is honestly a prolific voice actor. He is one of the most talented people in existence and you may i guarantee you if you play video games you have heard his voice so many multiple multiple multiples of times but one of the big ones of course is you voice nick fury in many of the marvel games right mm -hmm. yeah, like many of them cool. <laughs> yes yeah. you're kind of the go-to guy for such a thing 
kind of was, you know, we'll see, we'll see. Okay. And then recently, one of your big exciting newses is that you voice LeBron James in Multiverses. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. People are really excited about that. I was excited about it. I didn't know they were going to announce it like that. I'm like, what? Oh, hey, hey, that's kind of cool. It's yeah, super like, cool. And my community is all about Multiverses right now. Like everybody's playing it. So are my sons. So are oh. my sons. It's the and new big friends. thing. Yeah. People are like, can we come over to your dad's house? I'm like, it's your house too, baby. It's cool. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, so you are one of the most talented people in existence. And it's thank really you, just thank you, but no, you're, thank you. kind of not even fair because also, we have Susie, who is one of the most talented people in existence and has been doing this for not as long as everyone else, but still is like Crush. prolific. Crush. Outrageously. Thank Outrageously. You. Thank you, thank you. Has done so much, <laughs> just does not stop booking. I'm like so jealous. Yeah. She's um, so awesome. she voices Yuffie in Final Fantasy VII Remake Intermission, of course, which is the DLC that focuses exclusively on Yuffie and her adventure and how she comes to um, the part in the story where we're at and where we're going to be at next. She also is the voice of Eula in Genshin Impact, which is another one of those games that everybody's playing. <laughs> Everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you also voice Josie. Is it Josie? Mm -hmm. In Josie yeah. the Tiger and the Fish. Yes. So you really just kind of do everything. <laughs> I try, I try. Thank you so much. He's like, yeah, yeah, I try. Incredible. And we've already heard... <clears throat> Sorry, let me get a drink of water real quick. Oh, yes. Hydrate. Let me just everybody. hydrate. This is, this is chat's the reminder to hydrate time. as well. Oh, yours is water? Oh, my bad. <clears throat> oh, what's yours, <laughs> Mr. I'm, Bentley? I'm teasing, I'm teasing. It's too early in the morning to be doing all that. <laughs> Oh, me a truly earlier. I'm like, ooh, okay, it's too early. Hey, it's Saturday. No. There are no rules. <laughs> be doing your show like this. <laughs> <laughs> so we've heard a little bit already from Susie at SRGCon how you got started in voice acting, but for those of us who are new here, tell them tell them how you got started. Uh I mean long story short, I didn't really come from uh, acting or entertainment background. I was just kind of, I went to uh, college, I graduated, and then I had a nine to five job. Uh, it wasn't really anything to relate to anything right now. It was just um, working with international students um, for universities. And then um, one of my friends, a longtime friend of mine, was uh, uh, helping run a studio and he was like, oh, we're holding auditions. I remember you really like animation and video games. Like, would you just like to try it out? You know, because we were connecting because they were coming to PAX East for something. Um, so they were visiting and we met up. And so I did. I actually like I booked the lead part in their show, which was really crazy. Um, and then pandemic hit like soon after that. <laughs> And then I guess I'm, I got here, like, uh, I moved to LA in 2020 and Yuffie was actually the first audition that I received wow. and booked here. So <laughs> it's been a crazy awesome. journey, crazy, crazy journey. I'm super fortunate for all these opportunities. But um, it's amazing. I mean, yeah. that's, that's the story that <laughs> so many actors dream will be them. You yeah, know? I was holding a luck materia at the time. Like, Clearly. I, know, like, I, I, was, I was very, very lucky. <laughs> Clearly. It just, yeah. <laughs> Talk about a turn of fate. I mean, for real. Yeah, I mean, because at the time, my job was letting go of a bunch of people, including entire departments, uh, oh. mine as well. So I was like, you know what? I could either stay here in Boston and continue doing that, like another job, or... I can do something that I've never done before that's really, really scary that I don't know if it's going to work out. Um, so I chose that because I was like, I I'm, I love yeah, I'm never, I'm never going to get a chance like this again. So I love that. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, you know, on top of all that stuff, I got to say your talent, you know, people recognize <laughs> talent. So 
That's a beautiful story. I, we got to sit down and talk more, but I didn't know. Yeah, that. <laughs> yeah. We need, we need we need to talk as a group. Oh, yeah. We do. Yes, we so need I'm to have that. a little sit down. We need to have yeah. like a little group dinner. Well, I'm yeah. mad because I missed the concert because I was out of town. Oh, yeah. that's right. That's and where I'm Susie really and I met the first off. time, right? Yeah, At the Final yeah, Fantasy VII World Orchestra tour. Yes. They need to just invite us on another one. There we go. Exactly. That's all they have to do. <laughs> you just gotta let us know when it is. I'll show up. It's You're cool square I'll, Enix. I'll even get on the plane to go because I heard it was outstanding. It was yes. really good. It was really beautiful. Yeah. Um, somebody tweet at Square Enix. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tell them. Somebody. The composer, Square Enix, somebody. <laughs> All right. So, John, how did you get started in voice acting? What was the oh, first wow. for you? <laughs> uh, my first voice acting was free. I was at a club. And I was with my teammates and we were looking over the balcony and I said, hey man, this is what I think they're saying. And I pointed at a couple and I started imitating who they were. And all of a sudden I turned around and a bunch of other teammates came and a bunch of other friends were there and a bunch of other people were professional athletes came and I'm like, the heck is this? It's a crowd. I'm like, and then someone said, hey man, you know you can do this for a living. I'm like, what? And this was back in Minnesota. And I was like, yeah, whatever. And so. <laughs> came out to LA in 96 and, you know, just started figuring out that, okay, we're going to be on camera. We're going to do uh, te television. Movie, what motivated the move? I feel oh, like you skipped because, a step there. Because I had tried, cause, well, I played football at the University of Minnesota for five years. And then um, I got another scholarship to go to grad school. So I went for three more years. I stayed there because it was like, well, the Guthrie's here, right? So I'll, I'll work at the Guthrie. That didn't work out, thanks to my academic staff, but I'm not getting into that story. And then um, I wound up staying there and then yeah, I got married in 96 and I'm like, babe, I I'm from Chicago. We tried Chicago and there's, there's theater there and it's great. I went to New York and there's a lot of uh, um, soap opera stuff there. Mm -hmm. and I didn't really like New York at the time because it reminded me too much of Chicago. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, we've done everything we can do here in Minnesota. Can we just go out to LA and just try it? So we had a 13 day round trip ticket. And um, I wound up booking a, a stage show uh, out here and Michelle went back home and I said, okay, just let me see if I can get things going. And the hustle here was driving all the way from Ontario, California to Hollywood every day. <laughs> Oh, wow. And then we wound up booking something through a casting director named Monica Swan, who's no longer with us, but bless her heart. It was my first job, sister, sister. I met with her for like three hours. We just sat and talked and then wound up. That does not out. happen anymore. Oh, it's crazy. It's like Susie's story. It's, like, it's crazy. And then um, she was like, you don't have representation? I'm like, no, I'm just hustling. You know, this is that Midwest hustle, you know? And she said, I'm gonna get you representation. So she called all these agents. I got an agent, and but I'd booked two or three shows prior to having, you know, an agent. And then, um, you know, the rest is history. Michelle moved out. We're here, and four boys later, and I think a great career. And you know, that's it. That's it in this, you know, lump, lump, you know, lump sum. So we were just talking about how we got started in voice acting, right? And um, both of you have pretty incredible stories. Mine is not that incredible. So tell us, tell everybody. Yeah. Tell everybody how well, I got started in voice acting. I mean, it's it's just as unlikely. And I think we have to like, just give so much credit to the casting department for Remake because I, I got the audition, you know, a normal way through my agent, but I had never done voice acting before mm -hmm. at all. I mean, so I incredible. had done a lot yeah. of on-camera acting, but and I went to school for acting, but no voice acting. I had done, you know, one commercial voice acting class in school. I mean, years prior. So there was no reason for me to have any reason to be in that audition room. But I practiced, practiced, practiced the night before and kind of came up with a voice, did my research and then went in and I shouldn't have booked it because it's a really hard, you know, technically challenging job, but it just, I feel like the team really helps you through it, you know? Mm -hmm. I didn't feel like I was, you know, alone at any part in the process. And I think that was very helpful. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess it's just as unlikely that I booked the role. Well, first of all, you were 
perfect as Aerith. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love I love your voice for Aerith. As soon as I heard it, I was like, that's Aerith. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like you're totally right with the with the whole casting decisions. It's just crazy how they would give chances to people who just they don't know, like they didn't come from any background, there's no credits, like I didn't even like give them my website. They just had my email at the time. <laughs> wow. So, so, and I, I only had like one or two credits to my name at the time. So, but you're, you're right. Like they don't really look at that. They just want to see who's the best fit for the character. And I think yeah. that's incredible that they're able to find these people and make such a cohesive cast yeah. and also like definitely thank you to all the directors and mm-hmm. um localizers for helping us through all of this too to make it sound as good as they can mm-hmm. yeah got a heck of a team yeah heck of a team. it really really is both here and over uh, over in japan oh totally yes. totally yeah. i think yeah. we've talked about it so many times i mean at length but the amount of care that's just gone into this game I think people feel that yeah. a lot of care, a lot of love, a lot of thought. And um, I'm glad people like it. Isn't it nice yes. that we're in something yeah. that people like? Very refreshing. <laughs> Despite the trolls. <laughs> exactly. They actually, exactly. They actually help keep you going, too. So it's, it's all good. Yes. <laughs> Comes with the territory. <laughs> True. True. It is what it is. So <laughs> this is a question that we get asked a lot, I'm sure. Um, but we I was just asked it yesterday and I said, oh, that's such a good question. Let's save it for tomorrow because I really want to get your takes on it. Um, now that you've told your stories about how you got started in the industry, what's your advice for someone who wants to get started in this industry in voice acting specifically? Is it do the same things you did or is it do completely different things? What do you think? What's your advice? Susie, you can go for it. <laughs> I mean, I really don't think there is a singular path that you need to do. Um, just from our stories alone, we all come from different backgrounds. Um, you know, like I would say just do what you feel is right for you. Like if you think classes um, would help you get started, um, hone your craft, then definitely go for it. Or um, just finding a mentor or something. Or I don't know, like for me, I. I just just by by doing it <laughs> i guess the act of doing it is is practice in itself like doing auditions and everything um but yeah like just just know that if you really want to do it if you're really passionate about it you will find a way um to go out and seek any research um on your own um you will you will find a way to realize your dream <laughs> breezy Oh, I just have to agree because (laughs) because listening to so many stories, because of listening to all the stories, you know, I went to school for acting and they told us that, you know, make sure you go to school, make sure you know your craft, make sure you you learn as much as you can. Um, And that's true for voice acting as well as on camera acting. They are connected. You have to know how to do both. Mm -hmm. Um, But from there, you know, they tell you get an agent, but they don't really tell you how. They tell you now that you can, you know, try to book non-union work with online sites like um, Breakdown Services, backseat, Breakdown Services, right? Actors Access, Casting Networks, you can submit yourself for roles, which is wonderful. But they don't tell you how difficult it is or what kind of roles to submit for, how to audition for them properly. They tell you to get headshots, but they don't tell you what makes a good headshot. (laughs) They don't tell you your brand. They don't tell, I mean, they don't even tell you really how to do your own research and and forge your way in the industry. So I think what you said, Susie, is so spot on about if you really want this and you have to really want it because it Mm -hmm. is tough. If you really want it, you'll just never stop trying Mm -hmm. and you'll just figure it out that's terrible advice i know but that's honestly the reality that's the truth yeah because like no matter how much advice that you get like everybody has differing opinions on how to approach things like you have to kind of find your own way and um do what's best for you and yeah like everybody's different like i i i'm sorry to say there's no secret recipe (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> I think you both are right on with <clears throat> the fact that you've got to have some kind of training. Mm -hmm. um, if you have training, then that means that you are in a place where you're researching, you're looking up, you're meeting people, you're talking to people. Um, and then that, entail, that entails a, a plethora of more information for you to gain. So you would know the right audition houses, you would know the right casting directors, you would know the right classes to take, you would know how do I hone my craft, because if you truly are serious about it, you'll do every bit of research you can to do it. But having that, that root, that background in acting allows you to play the truth of a character. And I think that's important in anything we do, whether it's on camera, whether it's through voice, whether it's a commercial, whatever it is, you'll learn how to play the truth of the character um, that you have created here and here. So for me, I, I'm a big, big um, rah rah guy for hey, to put in the work. You know, whether like I said, you've got more resources now than me coming up I ever had with the internet. Mm -hmm. So you can always find different places. And my thing is that, like the three of us and, and so many people, it's always going to be different, but see okay they did this and they did this and they did this so you can do that and then you can do your thing and then you could you can do what all three of us did that's more information now for you to gain i i really really started a lot of my voiceover career began with me going online without a voiceover agent to like voice one two three and it broke down everything i needed to do how to put together a, a reel how to do this how to do that and it was so, but it was weeks of looking at it, figuring it out. Mm -hmm. And Susie, you said it best. The best practice is getting up and doing it. The more chances you get to do it, the more chances you get to audition, mm -hmm. the better you get. You learn your equipment, everything. So I'm, I'm, I'm about the hard work. That's like I said, that's the Midwest moral in me. I'm kind of like a blue yes. dude. So work, 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 work. Study, yeah. study, study, research, research, research. If you really want to do this. Okay, so that 100%. leads us perfectly into the next question that I have. So this is, you know, this is a cast Q&A and we are taking questions from the viewers. Um, I'm watching the Twitch chat. We are recording all of your questions, but this is a question from me because I'm curious and I want to know how both of you tick. So when you're in the booth, we, we just talked about the craft of acting and knowing your craft. When you want to like tap into an emotional moment like there are a lot of emotional moments in final fantasy 7 remake mm -hmm. i could not stop crying the whole playthrough so when you're in the booth you got to tap into those emotional moments like what have you learned is the best method for you to do that is it is it visual is it auditory is it for me like it's breathing like if i tap into my breath i'm an immediately centered in the emotional place that i need to be so like, what is it for you? I'm curious. Uh, it's hard because it, it depends on the moment for sure. Like sometimes I get inspired just by the scene itself. Like, mm -hmm. um, you know, what's going on. Um, when I was recording Intergrade, um, I was growing very attached to the story and all of the characters. So when I found out what was going to happen, um, I already started to feel emotional about it. So during the lead up to that scene, um, I was already at that point. And so I could really feel for the character, which says a lot about the writing of yes. this game. Yep. Uh, it's, yep. Yeah, yeah. So for it to be able to just jump at me from just the script alone um, is very powerful. I love about, that. So you connect yeah. with the storytelling. Yes. That's beautiful. Um, and, and the characters um, that, I, that I grew to love. Um, but outside of that, I would say maybe con connecting to a personal experience as well, um, or imagining myself in a similar situation, like if it was my, my friend who was in danger or something like that, you know? Totally. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a lot, lot like that too. Um, yeah. The storyline is brilliant. You know, the, the original story and then the translated story that we get for the English is just like, oh, oh, you <laughs> yeah. get it. And then if we, when we record and have visuals, total different level for me, when we have the mm. visuals in, in front of us, you go, oh, I'm banging on that wall because I think that Marlene is, you know, so right. 
-hmm. it's, there's so many different things. And I'm like you too, Breezy. Breath helps tremendously. Um, and I'm like 100% like you, Susie. I used the thing with you're explaining, we learned in, in acting class is, is substitution. Mm -hmm. So I've got, you know, my immediate family, my wife and my four boys, I can tap into that anytime to get to emotion, whatever that emotion may be, along with what, you know, we've been trained to do. But for me with voiceover acting, it's gotta be real because you're not on camera, you know? So you've got to internalize it and then get it out. So that's, that's kind of my technique as well. Gosh, that's so true. With on-camera work, you have your whole body to express emotion. Mm -hmm. But with voice acting, you have one of those yep. systems. Yep. Just one. And you have to you have to really be feeling it for that to translate naturally. So true. So true. Okay. So one of it's the It's a great question. question. Whoever mm -hmm. asked that. That's a great question. Whoever asked that, really great question. <laughs> great question. I'm just um, saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's here's my favorite thing to ask as well whenever I have guests on. Um, I want to get to know you outside of your work as well, because I think you're just wonderful people. So what would you say, what hobby or activity do you spend the most time on outside of work? And I know that's tough because we're all workaholics. I get it. I know. <laughs> Hobbies, free time. What is that? Never heard of it. I know. Go ahead, Sus. <laughs> Because Bri already answered mine. <laughs> work. I'm a yeah. Work. I'm work. My <laughs> hobby. I, listen, I'm I'm in the process right now of looking for a lake home. You know, because oh. I love to fish. That's what brings mm. me peace. Water. There's something about a body of water. I that love that, peace. John. And I. It, so on the West Coast, it's hard to find a lake home. Because yes. most of the lakes are man-made lakes. They're not yeah. real lakes. And then there's no coverage to fish. You know, I'm about like bass fishing. And so I've got to go all the way back to the Midwest, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, to go and get that kind of peace. But I don't want to really have a home on a lake in the winter. You know, I don't want to ice fish. And there's so many different things in the cost of housing right now and all that. So I'm like, mm. man, what can I do to find that peace? And for me right now, the hobby is to watch my kids do what they do. Like my oh. one, my oldest son is a photographer. When I see his work, I'm like, oh my gosh. My <laughs> second son is, uh, um, Noah is a musician. So when he's working, I'm like, oh my gosh. And he's a fashionista. My wow. third son is just, Maxwell can do everything. So when he's in his element, wherever he's working, whatever he's doing, when he's creating, I'm like, oh, that's just peace. My um, my baby plays basketball. So to go to a game and watch him, I'm in total peace. You know, most parents are like, no, 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 no. I'm like, oh, son, do you think? Yeah. My wife is now, she's, uh, she's a writer. So, and Michelle does so many other things. And she does ministry. So to see her create this children's book, I'm like, oh. That's beautiful that I, it's not even about a money thing. It's about how do we get this out to more people to have peace? You know, so for me, I pursue actively peace, mm -hmm. but I see it through my immediate family and then my distant family. And when I see, like, I have a cousin who works in the Montessori school, about to go visit her uh, in Nashville and see my uncle, who's the last patriarch. Those little things, I have to force myself to take the time to do like you say, Breezy, outside of work, because I'm always so trying to find that It sounds that like job, the through right? line is family. Yeah, That's it beautiful. It's, it's the only thing that gives me peace, yeah. other than prayer and God, but you know. Come on, I love which that. Is <laughs> Gosh. My bad, Sue, it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm with you all in terms of the work. Uh, because I haven't been here for long, it's kind of been like, I haven't really committed the time, unfortunately, which I'm trying to do now is to cultivate new new hobbies outside of work because that's all I've been kind of focusing on, especially in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it's, right. been a, it's been a bit challenging. Um, but if if it gets to that point, sometimes I like to bake. Like I like to make goodies and stuff. <laughs> you make chocolate chip cookies? 
I do. I do. Yeah, do I'll bring them next time. you make chocolate chip cookies with oatmeal? I, I think I have. I made like oatmeal cookies before. So <laughs> we're gonna talk after this. Oh I'm my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm I'm a sucker for <laughs> chocolate chip and oatmeal cookies. Really? Oh, oh okay. That that okay, it's pie? it's just the oatmeal that loses me. Texturally, really? it's an experience oh, I that texture. I don't enjoy. It's so oh, you don't understand. I don't I've understand. <laughs> They've done it with coconut too. I'm not a coconut dude, but someone did it and I'm like, oh, this okay, that's cool. But okay, Bree, I'll make it easy for you. Key lime pot. I'm a sucker for key lime pot, more so than the cookies. You know, I think I would like key lime pie now, but I didn't like it as a kid. So it's and not my like first it. choice. I usually, if there's like a type of pie, I will go for like banana cream pie. Oh, I, I love bananas. That. You know who has good key lime pie that I think you would like here in California? California Pizza Kitchen. No way! Oh, really? Be so, so, like, out of I am all surprised. The places, you would think this bakery over in Orange County, California Pizza Kitchen, right now for me, and I'm a key lime pie kind of sewer. So somebody <laughs> okay. can show me something better, but I have not seen anything better than California really? Pizza Kitchen. You heard it here first, Californians, get yourself right. over there. I've had seven cats oh, since plug, going to California it, Pizza Kitchen. Plus, just my stomach's talking because I haven't eaten. Until Susie. Same. <laughs> makes a key lime pie and then it's oh, all I over have, i have not attempted that before i've done it i've done a cheesecake, cheesecake. It's, a, it's almost the same yum i tell you what you make it i'll eat it doesn't matter it's key lime pie and it's been <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> okay so. so we're gonna get to some viewer questions now that i've selfishly asked my own <laughs> so without you know talking about anything we can't talk about how did your audition go did you feel really good about it? Or was it one of those that you're like, ah, oh, I don't know about that? Honestly, it was really kind of surreal because I was obviously very, very excited to receive the audition. I was like, oh my God, it's the baby, it's her. Like, this is unbelievable. Um, but I didn't think too hard. Like when I actually went in the booth, um, I kind of just, I was in that mindset of, well, this is what I can do, and this is what I can give, and this is what I think is her um, from me. Um, so I I did not think, if, if that makes sense. Like it, it just kind of it was. It's like I felt it uh, while doing it. So I I think I did maybe a couple of takes, and then I just I just sent it in, um, hoping for the best because I knew like I didn't really know how else to approach it other than just be like honest with what I thought would be easy. So. But then yeah. once you sent it in and you had time to think about it. <laughs> yes. Then that was when it kind of spiraled because I was like, I don't know if I'm going to make it here. I just, <laughs> I just uprooted my entire life and uh, I gave myself six months to succeed. And if I didn't, then I would head back home. I would just call it quits and you know so honestly I remember laying on the floor one day I think it was like a couple months in from not hearing and I was like I really I really want this to work like I really really want to be here and it was a very emotional time for me because it was very scary I was like if this doesn't work out then I have to you know face the fact that I didn't succeed and I have to like go home because I can't make it here but Honestly, this has been so special to me, and without it, I would not be here. So, <laughs> I'm yeah. glad you're here. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, you want me to go, Breezy? No. Okay. You can't answer this question. It's gonna have to be a different question. No, no okay. of course, John. <laughs> Tell us how'd your audition go? Did you knew um, you nailed it? I was nervous. I was super nervous. I knew the character because I played the original back in '97. And uh, I figured it out. I'm like, oh, this is very, oh my gosh. So I had like four or five different ways that I was going to do it. I was super nervous. Yeah. Wanted it so bad. I don't, I don't know of many jobs that I have wanted this bad. Um, like, bad. <laughs> like, this is bad. Oh my God. I was 27. And now, you know, so um, did the audition, narrowed it down to three different ways, got in the booth for everyone to hear it uh, overseas and, and hear and listen to direction. 
I had just come off of doing three jobs, so I really didn't have a voice. And y'all know mm -hmm. Barrett is loud and everything is glottal and huge. Brody. So I'm like, how mm -hmm. is this going to work? Prayed up in the car, went into the audition, did it and walked away. And you talking about what you were saying, Susie, laying down, I think I was like, yeah. the whole time, just <laughs> like waiting for a call. And uh, to a point where I think I reached out to our casting director three or four times, like, oh. did they make a decision yet? <laughs> okay, just hey, is everything cool? How you doing? How you dogs? Everybody cool? You know, just like. Only you cool. could get away with that, by the way, oh. John. I would I never. Was, oh, yeah. Breezy, I was so like on edge, like, man, if I get that, and it wasn't even about, you know, everything that I'm finding out comes along with it or the money. It was just like, it's a black character that I played where I, he doesn't die. And it's all yeah. these different things, right? And I'm like, yeah. and then um, I found out we got it. The casting director said, sit down, you know, I got some news for you. I'm like, she said, sit down? <laughs> And I was like, hold on for a minute. And I covered the phone. I was like, babe, we didn't get it. <laughs> to my wife, because she knew the call. She was, I was like, oh, it's straight up, straight. She was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then she said, Rita says, sit down. I'm like, mm. <laughs> and then she's like, I just wanted you to know that you got the part. I lost my mind. I ran around the house. The boy saw something was wrong. And she I was like, you got it. Oh my God. I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I was like, so when the rest is history. <laughs> The rest oh is so gosh. history. Yeah, I was so excited. Oh. How about you though? It was my first voiceover audition. So I thought there was, and it's very, it's very technically challenging when you have to like match the timing exactly because you have to be very inspired by the Japanese version. Um, everything comes off of that. So just in a very technical sense, it was very challenging, very specific. And it was my first time doing it. I thought, and even because it was such a big role that I knew right away when I got the audition, I thought, there's there's no way I'm going to book this. So I might as well go in and have fun because this is the, like this is it for me. Like this is the end of the line. I am never going to hear from these people ever again. So just go in and have a blast because this is going to be a great memory for me. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's really how I left that audition feeling. Yeah. <laughs> and then That's awesome. afterwards, how were you? I mean, it was a long time before yeah, we actually right. heard back and yeah. I could never call casting or even call my agent to ask casting where they were in the process. No. So I, I just- had, I was losing my mind. <laughs> I'm never like that either. I, I do the audition, I'm out, I'm yeah. good. And you leave I it on the table, yeah. Since I was 26. Yeah. I'm like, no, nah, I'm worried about, no, never. I'm like, do the audition, you roll. I was losing my mind. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I just, I really thought I didn't book it and I just and let it go. Do. And I thought, because there was a, there was a clause in the NDA that said like, if you don't book the audition, you can't even say that you auditioned. Yep. I remember that and specifically remember being like, it's a huge bummer that I can't tell anyone that I just had the best audition of my life. That's, that's a huge bummer. Yeah. yeah. Luckily I booked it. <laughs> Yay. And you're here. Yeah. That's so incredible. Oh my so gosh. Flowers. Yeah, so many flowers. So many, so many metaphorical flowers in this journey. <laughs> you know, I just had a conversation with somebody. No one knows how powerful Aerith is. They don't, they don't know. And, you know, I'm I'm hoping because the three of us have done research now that we have the role <laughs> about our character. Mm -hmm. So we know what we have to do within what we're asked to do. You know what I mean? And I, I just, I, so many people think they know. So I was looking at uh, tweets the other day, and like, eh, nah, nah, nah. I'm like, hmm, hmm. No one knows what we do. No. <laughs> it's like, it's all good. I can't wait for y'all to see what happens later. <laughs> I know. The work is being put in. So. It is so hard to keep secrets, mm -hmm. but it's also a little bit fun. It's, it's cool, but you know. I don't know. Man, I'm going to tell you, so many times people come into my stream and they're like, what can you tell us about the next game? And I'm like, you know the answer is nothing. And oh, then we I'll just move A on. B <laughs> right. 
But you're over here taunting them, John. I'm not taunting. <laughs> I'm just saying people don't realize the, our characters. They don't know. Unless, like, MJ Gallagher, who's written books about Nibelheim and mm -hmm. done the research for the Final Fantasy world, not just Seven, but where this person comes from, how it yes. affects Greek and Norse gods, all these. Unless you know the character, you don't understand the choices that are made. You know what I mean? So people are they're like, I can't wait for the next one to come out. And then they'll start talking craziness. And it's like, huh. And oh, I see, I love the theory crafting. I love oh. to read what everybody thinks is going to happen. That's like too. so it fascinating me to me. Now. It makes me <laughs> laugh. Like, unless somebody really knows, I'm like, dang, can't respond to that one. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> so true. <laughs> but for the most part, I'm like, man, this is just the way they've written Final Fantasy VII, especially the remake. Mm. Whew, the little nuances are beautiful like our first edition of this and then yuffie coming in it's like oh my gosh the, oh my just brains behind it and then the music and the visuals. Mm. oh stop oh stop oh i'm gonna goodness. cry just thinking about all of the little elements that they put in together oh, and the way that it comes deal. together it's like the most beautiful mm. it's ridiculous yeah i feel so privileged and blessed and honored man it's not even funny so true yeah. All right, so another viewer question. This one's really fun. I like this one. It might take some thoughts. Um, so it's a question for everybody from the Pegacris. If you met your characters in real life, and this I assume means in this world, what would you do with them for a day? It's fun, right? <laughs> like, I was say, what would you say to them? Would you like plan an activity? I, I immediately like want to take Aerith to Disneyland. Like that's oh. my first instinct. Like Aerith and I are going to Disneyland. I don't even yeah. like Disneyland that much, but I just want to see her be happy and excited and like, you know, go everywhere and like eat the popcorn, you know? Like I just, like, I think I would die. Yeah, I mean, that would be a great idea, but Yuffie gets motion sick, so I don't think she would appreciate that, right? <laughs> I'd, I'd probably take her to like some food places and we'd just like, eat a whole bunch of different foods and yes, I think she would have a great time. Like what's the what's this world's equivalent of the happy turtle? Oh my gosh. It's a bar, isn't it? Yeah. And Yuffie's like, I'm an adult. I do adult yeah, things. I'm, I'll yeah, go to I'm the happy turtle. <laughs> I I'd never I let her answer that with happy. <laughs> Give me your card, Yuffie. Yes. <laughs> She's I wonder what Yuffie's ID would say. Like, what year was she born? It was an NBA. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, John? Where are you going with Barrett? What are you doing? Me personally, first thing I said, "Hey, man, is that is that thing loaded?" <laughs> <laughs> that was the first thing I say. I'd be like, yeah. You know, like, Fair. Fair time. question. And I'd be like, all right, cool. And then. Um, I was like, let's go back to my neighborhood in Chicago. Let's just walk. Oh my gosh, I love yeah. that. Yeah, I would I would say I want you to meet some people. And I know we'd be cool because we'd be armed. You know? <laughs> but How I would, I funny. Would, I would, yeah, I'd you want to introduce back. him to some people. Well I would I would want him to, to visit folks in our world mm -hmm. that you know needed to see a hero. Just needed some hope. Yeah. You know, of, John, oh stop. God. No, I'm just saying, in the world we live in right now, if we can just help people um, love again, mm. or and I'm not saying that a, a brother walking down the street with a big gun arm is going to make him love, but people will be excited about, oh my gosh, that's just a good dude in real life. I get to go up and talk to him and, um, you know, just change our atmosphere towards each other. And you know, just just communicate again, you know, like we used to do, and try to love each other again, like we used to do. Um, and some of us are still doing, you know. I would I would just try to change the atmosphere of the culture of what's happening because we need some peace up in this doggone country. So it's all and in the world. Period. After yes. having traveled, you know, the world needs peace. And however you can bring joy to somebody, and however amount of time you got. I think it's important that you 
you, you are the catalyst of bringing joy to folks however you can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Couldn't agree Stop. more. As Stop evidenced by eyes. my oh. misty oh, eyes, Sarah. John. Oh. <laughs> Look what you've done. I'm sorry, but you know how I am. I do. I do. If I don't cry in a, at least once in a conversation with you, something's wrong. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's funny. Okay. So the next question is from Lord Stang, and this is, um, you know, based on what you can remember, what line gave you a really hard time? Like either you had to do it over and over and over again, or it was just a real challenge to tap into emotionally, or just you couldn't get it to sound right. Is there any line that sticks out to you? That's really difficult. I know I've talked about a few different moments in my Final Fantasy VII Remake playthrough uh, that gave me a really hard time. So that's why I kind of immediately have a few that I'm like, yeah, this one, this one drives me nuts. What was yours, Breezy? I, I could go on and on. You had a lot? I have so many. Oh, wow. I had never voice acted before this. I had a really hard time. One of the ones that I, I don't seem to remember talking about a lot because I think we all know, everyone in chat knows, the Corneo laugh, the oh. horse whinny sort of imitation. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously yeah. gave me trouble, but that I'm famous, like that's a famous one for me. But one that was really challenging for me is um, the character, the kid named Oats. I can't uh -huh. help but like have to like, huh? I, I feel like I like vomit out that word. <laughs> Oats, and like Oats. having to do that in Aerith's like head voice, like oh. but you can't oh. add too much breathiness because then it becomes hoats. Oh, <laughs> and then we were recording that when I had a really scratchy voice, so when I listen back to the playthrough, I can hear myself like scratching on oats. <laughs> <laughs> it drives me nuts. That's oh funny. Gosh. That's funny. You guys have any you remember? Susie, you got one. Uh, it's it's so hard to remember specific yeah. lines. Me too. Yeah, yeah. I I do know at the very end, um, it was like the extremely emotional scene. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a hard time executing that for the fact that Kirk <laughs> and Justin kept cracking jokes in between. <laughs> Oh That's my funny. gosh, of course we they did. Funny. And you know how we have to do it like one at a time, right? Yeah. So it's like, I can't really roll through the scene. I have to do it one at a time. Yeah. Just match timing and everything. Hard. But in between every take, they would just make me laugh. because <laughs> Oh so my I'm gosh. To get in the moment, I'm trying to cry, but I have to wait for you <laughs> to finish cracking jokes and, and <laughs> making sure the line matches. <laughs> That's so fun. Oh, of course. Awesome. I remember that distinctly. Of course. <laughs> for me, it's not, uh, uh, there are several for me too, Brianna. So just, you know, I, I there are several. Thank you. But That does make me, me feel better. Oh no, there is, there is a lot. I mean, a lot. Uh, and it was trying to match them up to, like you said, Suze, what the next line was going to be. Because I guess everyone who's listening doesn't know or watching doesn't know that we have to fit the line, the English line within a certain amount of time to what the Japanese ref is. So if it's a, a full on speech, mm -hmm. you only do one at a time to try to match that. And that's challenging, right? So mm -hmm. whereas you want to say, well, let me just do the monologue because that's what you know right it's hard to do yeah. unless you have excellent ear timing which is hard but even but still me, we don't do it that way even no, if you have the uh, timing down perfection doesn't matter we still don't do it that way because we have to get multiple takes yeah mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. for me it was more um visually trying to make the words work with what the mocap actor had already mm -hmm. laid down so barrett's big and he's big right so yeah. the elevator scene in the very beginning was so challenging because mm -hmm. you know if i was mocap i wouldn't have done it 
that way. So I had to put myself in the headspace of how they did it and then make the words make sense with the action. And I know you can't, all, you know, and just make it work. But then I had the weird thing in the back of my head, Breezy, you and I have talked about this before, where I didn't want him to be a caricature. Mm -hmm. I didn't want him to be some big mm. brute who was African-American. I wanted to make him believable, despite the fact that the black man has a gun on his arm, you yes. know? And so that I had so much going in my head and that threw me to try to go, how, how do I, mm. how do I make this big? Cause that's like the intro. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, how right. do I, and then they're like, yeah, we're gonna use this for the trailer. And I'm like, you know, so <laughs> Isn't it I, so scary when they say that? Oh man, <laughs> I'm like, don't tell me, don't tell me. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. there's, there's a lot going on in my head, but we, you know, it worked, so. I had a very similar experience to you, John, because Yuffie, like Barrett, is very, very expressive, mm -hmm. extremely so. Mm -hmm. And the challenge was, you know, kind of toting the line of, you know, yeah, the mocap actor is doing these huge kind of motions that aren't necessarily like what we do in real life, mm -hmm. um, but also trying to keep it as grounded and realistic as possible so she doesn't stick out like a sore thumb next to the other cast who are extremely uh grounded and subtle um uh -huh. in their deliveries so that was definitely a challenge I, I feel you on that so you know that's the toughest thing for for me breezy matching the mm -hmm. words to the movement you know what I mean? Definitely. Along with, like you said, both of you voice of characters who are so so larger than life, mm -hmm. and that's one of the amazing things about this game is that it's not reality. Right. It takes you to an elevated, more animated space, which right. I think allows for greater play of emotions. And so there's definitely a reason why things are done that way, and I think it's it's very artful. But yes. you do have to find a balance because if you go too far over that line, it plays as not genuine. Right. And and people exactly. kind of close their hearts to the character because mm -hmm. you're like, I don't I don't get it. It's not yeah. right. It's Thank too God much. Thank God for our directors because yes. they they know the beginning from the end. And they can pull us back or push mm -hmm. us forward. So we got some excellent directors. We really do. Absolutely. We have a very very good team. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. I I love it because their instinct is to always go smaller <laughs> mm -hmm. in comparison. Um, so yeah, definitely an amazing, incredible team. Love them. Uh, yeah. We're pretty lucky. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are. Yes, <laughs> even when they're cracking jokes, <laughs> it's, it's always the best when they can make us laugh because that helps sessions go by just mm -hmm. so much, so much happier, so much yeah. joy in those sessions. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so here's a really good question that I think might be tough if you haven't really played the game, but uh, Chris is joking is asking if you could equip a materia in your own life, what would you pick? Healing. 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 Oh, what kind of healing? True. Healing yeah. people's hearts, man. <sighs> John. I mean, come on, <laughs> think about it. That's where the root of the issues are, right? How many people do we know, especially now that I'm a part of this? Bree, you and I did a, a convention and we saw how many people were hurting. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, thinking about taking themselves out or just dealing with life, which caused a lot of other issues in their life. You know, sickness, um, bitterness, all these different things. Man, if you could go in and heal somebody's heart with a healing material, I think we, you know, I, I'm going to stop because I'm going to make my dang self cry. But there's a lot of folks hurting. And then being cooped up during COVID didn't help a lot of people. Um, yeah. So that's why I was like, anything I can do to speak life into somebody, however I can do it, use this platform to do it. Otherwise, what the heck are you doing? You know what I mean? So, man, I have some material. Around, See, off. now you're making me look like a jerk because I was going to say like Ifrit Materia just like immediately summon in this big inferno monster to incinerate my enemies. Hey, but on the real <laughs> tip, that may help some of the people who are causing the issues that's where true. everybody else is dealing with. I'm just saying, 
This is true. Making me look bad, John. Uh, no, no, I, he's making I look. us all there's, look there's bad. There's room for that. <laughs> there you go. You heard it here first. There's room for me incinerating my enemies. <laughs> or scaring the hell out of them. There you go. Least. There you go. I'm just telling him to back off a little bit because my guard dog over here will burn, burn you to a crisp. Don't burn him. You don't change. <laughs> Take that hood off. I'm sorry. <laughs> Stop. Just burn the hood. Everything else, it'll be a lot. <laughs> <laughs> let me stop yeah me you stop. sometimes oh. you gotta rein it in john uh, no. <laughs> i remember you at kupokan making too many jokes but right. you're you're so funny i don't know how you do it okay Susie, materia do you I know mean, i don't know how i can follow up after that beautiful <laughs> i know <laughs> you know right <laughs> yeah, yeah that one that one too <laughs> I mean, in true Yuffie fashion, I would I would take all of it, you know, yep. <laughs> yeah, and, and apply it to any situation possible, including healing the world, mm -hmm. um, incinerating mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. where needed, mm -hmm. and just applying it wherever. So, right. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, would you feel like you even need a luck up materia because you've already kind of got one in your back pocket? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't help. It, it, it wouldn't hurt to have it. <laughs> Can't argue but with I that. Have a whole arsenal, like a whole bag, like like Santa Claus. <laughs> <Claude. laughs> <laughs> Just carry a sack around. I'm like, here you go. Here's the cure materia for you. Here's the ifer materia for you. <laughs> oh, you would you would gift it out? No, she'd be like, you can use it for a second. Oh, you can yeah, borrow yeah, it. Give it back to me afterwards. Okay, yeah. it's a borrowing <laughs> situation. Yeah. Yeah. Like, give it back. <laughs> good, good, good. Yeah, well, you can Susie heal, came like, to LA. Susie actually came to LA with luck materia. I believe that. <laughs> Truly do. But Blessing all you. all of us kind of did, though. True. Yeah. Very true. Uh, okay, so, John, this is specifically a question for you, and this is uh -oh. from Jeff. You remember Jeff, I assume. What up, Jeff? Yeah. Uh, so, Jeff's question is, can you talk a little bit about crafting the voice for LeBron in Multiverses? Because it's, like, really good. got to really look at a lot of LeBron footage. Whether he's on the court, whether he's in practice, whether he's talking to Bronny, when he's talking to his wife, whether he's doing an interview, whether he's doing an interview or off the cuff in his barbershop um, series, whether he's talking to Draymond, whether he's talking to um, uh, Derek Fisher, <laughs> whether he's talking, you know what I'm saying? So I listened to a lot of what LeBron did. There's only been one time where I've actually gotten to see LeBron in person talk. Uh, when I went to a game, I could hear him, but you know, mm -hmm. but uh, he, my son went to practice and one of the trainers was the same trainer that trains LeBron. So LeBron was leaving and he was speaking to people. So I, I heard him and I was like, man, that, and he's a stud. I mean, the dude is just, I can't even explain. You're talking about somebody at the top of their craft. One of the greatest players that ever played the game from a baby into the NBA. Uh, he's just an incredible guy. So a lot of, lot of, lot of research. Once again, the work, work begets work. Work is why you do what you do. Cause how would that sound if I did LeBron in the wrong voice? That would be horrible, mm -hmm. horrible. And they were all small phrases, which makes it harder mm. because you know, to do a sentence with LeBron, I'm like, okay, this is a pattern he had. I can remember when he was on this show to do little snippets and then some of them are yelled out and called out that was different so i'm like i gotta be on my a game so and you always are though mm. on your a game <laughs> it must be I'm so like, hard i gotta wake up <laughs> you know? so thank you for for humoring jeff and answering his question you got sure it jeff. He appreciates it hope you mm -hmm. like the game okay so here is a really interesting question we're gonna bring it back to final fantasy 7 remake um, as someone who is both fans of the universe and part of crafting the universe, the creation of it, um, do we ever get caught up in wondering what's going to happen next? Do we ever theory craft about the things that we don't yet know and how things are going to turn out? When I first started, I didn't. I was like, oh, I know this game. I played this game in 97. I played it twice. Oh, I'm and then I went, oh, yeah, it's a remake. Yeah. <laughs> For real. <laughs> yeah, so I used to try to project, 
But now I'm like, what are we doing today? <laughs> you literally don't know. I'm like, what's going on? This isn't, I don't, <laughs> I don't, what? <laughs> yeah, what are we doing? Because as soon, because I was like, yeah, I remember this. Like they did this and that. And then, and then we're like, oh, so what happens next? I couldn't say. <laughs> I could, I really could not tell you. <laughs> and that happened so. early on in, in our first installment. That happened early on. I'm like, what are we, what are we doing today? Especially when, and no spoilers, but especially when Barrett is up in the president's office and, mm -hmm. stuff. and I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I yeah. Married, that, yeah. I was like, I don't remember that happening ever. Mm -hmm. Ever. So and, I was shocked. And just like what happened to you, Suze, mm -hmm. you should have seen our director, our booth tech. Our, our translator and think there were two in the office at the time. They fell out laughing. Oh my god! In the back of my mind, I'm like, dang, that was over. You know my money. <laughs> and, then, and then I was like, for real? <laughs> Seriously? No. You had and to go through the, all they the stages of grief. So I, I was like, can we take a break? I gotta use the bathroom. <laughs> They let me live in it. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah, they've really found a, a great way with this remake project of, of doing the same things, but doing different things yeah. at exactly mm -hmm. the right moments for each. Yeah. They, they're, they're changing it up enough so that you don't know what's gonna happen. No. And that's a fun experience for the fans, but it's a fun experience for us too. Keeps mm -hmm. it fresh. Yeah, it does. It really does. But it also, I mean, has me chomping at the bit, like chomping at the bit to know what's going to happen next. I mean, sometimes whatever they have on the on the screen for the lines, I read ahead as much as I can because I just I want to know mm -hmm. just like you. So all of you viewers out there who want to know, you're not alone. You're not. We're with you. We're in this with you. We want to know, too, but they don't tell us what well, we don't need to know in that exact moment. No, exactly. and that makes the performance really real. Right, because mm -hmm. the characters don't know what's going to happen either. And once it hits, it hits us too, so. Yeah. That's true. You know, they do tell you in acting school, don't anticipate mm -hmm. what's going to happen next. Because if your character doesn't know, you shouldn't act like you know. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we really don't know. We really don't. Mm -hmm. Cousin Pete. Cousin Lee, stop calling me. <laughs> what is that a reference to? No, I'm just, I got friends that all hey man, what's when you uh, No, they don't. <laughs> oh, you don't know. They call you up and ask questions? Uh, or or they'll be playing the remake and like, okay, I'm on level three. Should I <laughs> just play the game, man? I'm yeah. Fine. Oh, that's so play funny. Well, you said, no, the Barrett said, you, you just play the game. You know, it's hilarious. It's hilarious. Okay, so here's a question from Celsius, and it's less of a question. It's more of a request. Uh -oh. Do we have a favorite line of our remake characters, and could we say it in voice? <laughs> Look at Susie thinking. Uh, I'm thinking really hard, because she has a lot of goofy lines. <laughs> she has some great lines, though. Barrett, we have we share a line. We share a line. Did you know which one, Bear, uh, John? <laughs> which one? The victory theme. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yes, we do. That's a yeah. fun one. Everybody asks, "Can you do the victory thing? Can you do the victory yeah. thing?" Yeah, it's like, yeah, we can do it. Like well, are you ever tired of it? <laughs> so Me? fun. I don't. I don't get tired of because it's such an honor to get that the fanfare. It's a, I didn't know I was going to be able to do the fanfare. I mean, you hear it when you, the original, you hear mm -hmm. And I'm like, dang, I get to say it? Like, for real? Right? Are you asking everybody to say it? You know, so that was, that's a fun one. That's yeah. A one. Are we trying to do this together? Let's do it. Well, yeah. oh, okay. You're going to do it, the two of you together? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Count it Wait, off. You we'll can count us together. down. Yeah. Three, two, one. Will you count <laughs> us down? Okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> it was perfect. Oh, you know how I should have counted it down. I should have counted it down with one of my favorite lines. Because oh, then I could have told viewers, 
Here, this is for you. <laughs> That's awesome. Missed opportunity. Man, a close up of you too. <laughs> so Celsius, you better love that. If you don't love that, I'm gonna find I'm not <laughs> oh my gosh, the chat is exploding right now. They are oh, so happy. Cool. They're so oh, pleased. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> just as a reminder, the whole reason that we are here together today is all thanks to Streamly. Streamly is where you can go online and buy prints and we will sign them live on a live autograph signing. Um, I know we each have our own pages, but there is one kind of collective page for all of our prints. It's streamily.com slash FF the number seven remake, or you can type in exclamation mark streamily and the link will drop in chat. So you can check out any of those prints. And then we all each do our own live streams. I know I do mine here on this Twitch channel. I did one yesterday, it went soup. It was super, super fun. Um, and you can watch your autograph get signed live, which is super cool. Um, Susie, do you do yours on your Twitch channel? I do, I do. You can follow me at yes, Susie, uh, Y-E-S-U-Z-I-E. Um, and that is where I do my signings. And all of your Twitch streams are super fun, by the way. She also oh, plays video games. Yes, I do. When I have energy and time. <laughs> True. We're not chasing work. Relatable. <laughs> yes. And John, you have a signing right after this, right? Ooh. Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah. Yeah. I do, do you know when that starts? Do you have a hard out for our our chat today? I don't know. Hold on, Matt. <laughs> I'm at Streamly, so I got it. It's true. Yeah. You're Do all I set. Have a hard out? But what time am I supposed to sign? Uh, like, I think that's a half hour after. After this train? Yeah. So what time is that? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to do that. I, I sign a half hour after our stream. Oh, fantastic. Whenever this Matt finishes, says, then. So I'm trusting Matt and I'm trusting you, Breezy. <laughs> okay, but you Got did me. schedule yourself in some time for a lunch break, right? Yeah, that's, that's the half hour. That's my half hour. Okay, <laughs> good. Uh, then let's see. Um, all right, so then we'll wrap it up with this question. Is it time already? Well, we're already 20 minutes past when we were supposed to be ending had we started on time. Oh, okay. But well, we have- I I'll just go straight to my, my signing. Or yeah, we have like, you know, 10-ish more minutes. Um, okay. If we were to fill out the like, you know, full mm -hmm. hour and a half that we plan to be on. Okay. Technical difficulties that, aside. By the way, I know I'm having fun too. I never want to yeah. leave, but that's why I had to ask about your time because I want to be respectful of I'm all of your you time. I didn't know. <laughs> I appreciate both of you so much. All right. So here's a question that's um, kind of revolves around what Kiwi Kratos is wondering. And this is a question um that i'd like to kind of combine with my own question as well so kiwi kratos asked you know where do you see yourself in five years but i'd also like to kind of add that to the context of is there any acting work that you know you haven't gotten to do or you haven't gotten to do enough of that you'd like to do more of in the next five years yeah i i'm still i consider myself still early on in this career so i would say the sky's the limit like i want to try everything mm -hmm. um in five years obviously i still want to be here i want to be with this amazing final fantasy 7 family with you guys um but you, know, you are I'd forever also... now just so you know <laughs> like just to clarify that like you are yeah. stuck with us forever just like real family <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um but yeah, just explore new things. Some things I haven't really gotten to do are, you know, mocap. Mm -hmm. I think that would be really cool. Um, maybe try on camera one day, who knows? <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah, I'm very excited for the future. <laughs> you wanna go last on this one, Bridget? Sure. Cause I, I wanna hear yours. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say mine and get it out. I'll, I'm like Susie, I'm gonna do it all. We train to do it all. Um, if I have the opportunity to do it all, I'll do it all. Um, whether it's voiceover, whether it's on camera, whether it's television, whether it's film, uh, I would love to do more movies. Um, mm -hmm. uh, just recently, for some reason, on camera just started kicking back up, like literally, just recently. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so we'll be doing stuff that's gonna come out soon. Uh, a commercial just happened, that's gonna be coming out Congrats. soon. Congrats! But yeah, it's cool. Um, but I would love to do more on camera stuff and 
uh, you know, I, I'm loving being back on camera. I forgot how much I liked it. Uh, but voiceover, I'll do till I die. Yeah. You know what I mean? Until Absolutely. I can't walk to the studio. I love <laughs> doing this. So, yeah, next five years, I don't know. The sky's the limit, you know, God willing. Uh, I love that. I don't, I don't have an answer like both of you. You I mean, have to. Oh, yeah. Well, so what I mean, what I, I'll qualify that because I agree with both of you in that I'll take anything. I love to work. I love this industry. I will also do commercial voiceover, on-camera work, whatever. I'll do what I get hired to do. Love that. Love that for me the next five years. But really, if I had to choose, like specifically, like throw the dart at a dartboard and, and shoot, that's not really a good metaphor because you don't kind of really like choose where to hit on a dartboard necessarily. What if you're bad at darts? <laughs> All right, so th forget the dartboard. But if I had to like specifically pick like one thing I'd like to do more of in this industry, especially because Aerith is such a wholesome, wonderful, you know, sweet light flower girl character, even though she has her sass and her spunk, I really want to like take it the other direction and I just want to play a villain. Mm. Yeah, like really, really horrible, nasty, Evil incinerates air. her enemies kind of villain, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you and this fire, little fire starter. Uh, <laughs> I just think people won't watch. expect it, and I really want to just like flip, yeah. flip perception on its head. Oh, that'd be so fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. Stretch, stretch your goals. Do whatever. You yeah. Know? Seriously, yeah. I always look at it as a spectrum. You can give this in. You can give this in. If you can do that, you already know you can do everything in between. Yes. So go for it. I'm always about going for your dreams. So many people say, well, I don't know if I, well, I can. And don't let anybody tell you can't. Just do it. Yeah. You know, study up, train, do it. Whatever it is. Even if I can't speak, yes, you can. Go and talk to somebody, you know. Just practice, 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 practice. Just don't give up on yourself. Because honestly, a lot of people in this world who haven't met you or who have met you need you. So mm -hmm. that's what, and I'm not Time. just talking about you in particular, Breezy. I'm talking about the same thing that we say to people when we go to conventions and we meet people. Don't give up because somebody else needs you in this world. They need to see you not give up. They need to see you live. They need to see you breathe because you're that walking, breathing testimony for somebody who might need that to walk and breathe the next day. So don't give up. Do your thing. Live. That's so true. There's such mm -hmm. a power in saying, if they can do it, I can do it too. Oh yeah. Right. Oh, and yeah. it's so true. Oh exactly. yeah. There, there is so little in the human experience that's unique. Very true. <laughs> you know, Very even true. though we all are unique and that is true, we're all special. There's, there's no one out there who doesn't know what it's like, who hasn't been where you've been. Nothing new. Exactly. And that's life's crazy. but a vapor, so take advantage of it. So, so how, how does someone who has a dream wants to follow it, but just has delayed, delayed, delayed. How does someone break out of that pattern and just, just do it? Get I was around like people that. to encourage you. Mm -hmm. Get around people to uplift you and edify you. Get around people to push you. And then you in turn do the work to <clears throat> work outside of that box that you put yourself in. Or if someone else has put you in, unfortunately, just get outside of the box. Um, Susie, you said it. Do I stay here mm -hmm. in Boston? Or do I take this step off the cliff and know that I'm gonna be good? At least you can say you've tried. Yeah, exactly. You know? I was in that exact position. So I can say that to everyone who has that fear. It is extremely scary, but to have the courage to really go for what you want in life, you know, you have to really think and sit down and ask yourself, well, what would make me happy? Does this make me happy right now? Is my life right now making me happy? Mm. And if the answer is no, then you have to work really hard to find out what will um, and to have that courage to pursue that life that you deserve. But there's preparation in that too. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't encourage anybody to just jump. Yeah. But save up your finances mm -hmm. have a plan if you're going to move have a plan just, just don't jump yeah. into it because unfortunately the entertainment business there's a lot of um predators <laughs> they will take advantage of you if you don't have something they will offer it at a cost and you don't need to compromise who you are as a human being mm -hmm. as a person as a male a female 
just because you think that's what's going to fulfill your dream or what you're going after prep be prepared mm -hmm. have a, a good base around you to keep you accountable and to help you but make sure financially you're able mm -hmm. to do that um don't just jump off a cliff with no parachute you gotta have a plan exactly see i love those those two pillars of advice because i feel like the life that you build has pillars of truth that aren't necessarily the same, but they're both important. You have this practical pillar, this very important functional piece of make sure you have a plan, make sure you have a backup plan and a backup plan to your backup plans. But none of that is going to matter if you also at the same time don't also take the leap of faith because you deserve it. True. So, so both of your foundation is built of both of those important pieces. Mm -hmm. And so it's important that we touched on both of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. I also think there's something to be said for if someone doesn't even know, can't even get to the foundation because they don't know how to build the pillars. Mm -hmm. Like they really mm -hmm. need, I think sometimes you need to hear the question, what is actually the smallest step that you can take forward mm. what is the Gosh. smallest step because i know the past two years have been hard for everyone mm. True. and then on top of that like the past however long you've been alive is hard because life is hard yep. right so sometimes it can feel daunting to make any progress at all and so what's really helped me when I am very resistant to making a change is what is the smallest step I can take forward right now? And for me, sometimes that's literally, I'm going to put my hand on my mouse. Mm. I'm going to mm -hmm. click Google. I'm mm. going to open it up. And then the next smallest step I can take is put my hands on the keyboard, type in my question of how do I get started? Or how do I, I don't know the answer to, and whatever that is, like that can be the smallest step. And that in itself is a success because that's how you build your pillars, which come to your foundation. Do, do foundations go on pillars or do pillars go on foundations? That's a great question. I'm not a construction worker. So the first step I would take is do foundations go on pillars or do, <laughs> or do pillars go on foundations? But you understand kind of where where it's going from there. I think sometimes taking the smallest step forward can help you get to the next steps of psychologically, how do I move forward? And also practically, how do I move forward? It's true. It's very true. It's hard. It's multifaceted. It's complicated. And for some of us, it, it, it's I have a dear friend that I just met this week uh, who have disabilities. It's it's even harder. Um, but some of us, it's, hey, how do I get up in the morning and just get in the shower and go? Exactly. And mm -hmm. it's different for everyone. But I would encourage you to find out what your small step is in order to get up and move forward. And I'm not forcing it, but please get up and move forward and always keep in the back of your mind your success isn't just for you it's for somebody else to see that you got up and took a step forward because that's an issue that i think a lot of us have especially in the western uh, region um, we always think it's about us and it's, it's just not you know we gotta learn that understand that some of our actions are accountable to other people and, and that can either motivate them or take a different route and i'm always about let's 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 motivate you know so do your thing now that's so core to who you are john every um, time i'm around you you find a way to lift everyone around you up because if we don't who does yeah. you know what i mean yeah I, I mean, do. I mean, I know how much, how many times being an only child too. I know how many times I've had to search for motivation. And you're right in saying that too, Brie. Pick up the mouse. Like I said, information highway is for real. You know, and it, you make a choice. Um, 
choices kind of shape lives and action. So make good choices. <laughs> Make good choices, kids. <laughs> if you take anything from this, make good choices. Make good choices. Not just kids. It's true, mm -hmm. man. It's true. We're all kids. It's true. Choices. They're all Husbands. kids when it comes to making good choices. Husbands. Wives. Yes. <laughs> make good choices. Yes. Make good choices for your inner children, too. Heck yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> well, am I going to start crying again? No. I, no. I, I started tearing up, John. Like <laughs> no, no, don't tear up. Y'all know what I'm saying is what we, you know, feel and what we do. It's like it's human nature. It's you know, I'm not trying to like be Mr. Motivation, don't speak all the time, but it's just like I don't know. I just think sometimes we just need to hear it, and sometimes I need to hear it. I'm speaking to myself more than I'm speaking to a lot of people. I mean. It's been crazy 24 hours for me. So I'm like, man, how do I, how do I get up and do what I love to do? And you talk about, you know, loving to do what we do. Oh, I love doing what we do. And, and, you know, talking about finding peace, your first question, it's not just fishing. When I'm in a booth, I'm like, <sighs> oh, <laughs> yeah. You know, that's a beautiful thing. I would love to have that sense of peace when I'm in the booth one day, but it is not yet. I'm not experienced <laughs> enough yet. I'm you still will. second guessing every every single moment. You well, will. if not peace, then joy. Like yes. utter joy. No, there's definitely yeah. joy. There's definitely um, joy. Like I said, when I see what's gonna happen next, I feel a spark <laughs> of joy. That was so good. <laughs> Thank you both so much for, for hanging out with us today. Truly. Of course. Oh, thank, thank you. you. You are <laughs> gems of the world. Truly, both of you. I'm so inspired by both gems. of you. <laughs> materia. Your materia, your shiny, beautiful, yeah, multicolored shiny. materia. <laughs> like, I'm all of them. See, <laughs> me love me. <laughs> you no, mentioned you earlier, Susie, the Final Fantasy family. I really do. I feel like we got, we got real lucky. We did. We got we a did, good one with sure. this group here. So let's. And they haven't even seen everybody else. I know. I know. It's <sighs> it's a shame. It needs to happen. It'll happen. I mean, hopefully there will be another maybe convention concert? meetup or concert or something like that where we can all get together. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Yeah. Um. So we're gonna we're gonna end it there, unfortunately. But the good news is that if you just haven't been able to get enough of Susie and John which I understand there's never enough of Susie and John. Uh, you can definitely find them in a myriad of ways, Susie on your Twitch channel, but also on social media. What is your tag so that they can find you? Uh, well, on Twitter, it's just Susie Young, my name. Uh, and on Instagram, it's Susie.Young because Susie Young was taken. <laughs> Perfect. I mean, we actually just dropped the links in the chat right just then because our mods are superstars so they're easy to click in the twitch chat if you would like to follow Susie on on social media as well as john the so, so, social media aficionado i just had to look it up <laughs> <laughs> you did this to me before john where can we find you i'm like hold on <laughs> well i have i have it it's in the twitch chat i can tell okay, them it's cool i don't have to say it because I, okay uh, if bentley, you want to oh. follow john on twitter it's twitter.com slash john eric bentley and on instagram it's the same john eric oh. bentley i'm glad to know that easy <laughs> easy peasy lemon squeezy but of course if you absolutely have to get a print one of the beautiful prints that we've had made up with any of our autographs, you can go to streamily.com slash FF7, that's the number seven, remake. That's FF7 remake on Streamly, or you can click the link that was just dropped in the chat and we'll sign autographs for you live. So it's kind of like the closest thing you can get to a one-on-one -on -one without going to a convention. Sure. And um, yeah, the prints are gorgeous. And I have heard many multiple times that it's something to see the prints on the Streamly website, but when you actually see them in your hands, they're like so much prettier. Oh, I lost it when I saw mine. I'm like, it didn't look like that on Instagram. And then I'm yeah, like right? holding it going, oh my God. They're gorgeous. They up, well, hold on. If you're going to hold yours up, hold on. Let me get mine. Yeah, yeah. Everybody yeah, hold, hold yours up. up. I feel hold like better hold, hold on, hold on. I have mine right here. Ah, not this one. It's there you screen. go. Yeah, I also have materia. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. 
Yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. Look at us. Look at us. Yeah. We are professionals. Hey, that's the real picture on the le on the left in the red dress. This one, yeah. yeah this is actually me in cosplay. Deal. That's that so is her cool. Cosplay. Um, you all have to do some cosplays. Yes. I gotta get a whole costume, I, I man. My, yours is like easy to get. I gotta like, buy. Um, arms. I collaborated with cosplayers to make this for me. Did you? I did not make this myself. You can't just buy this online. This is no, custom yeah. made by a cosplayer, and I'm sure cosplayers would love to work with you. Well, I, there's there's a cosplayer out in um, England, and he always shows me. Mo, he's always showing me. I just got this. Just got this. You should do this, mate. You should. I'm like, bro, <laughs> you you're in a spot where you can buy everything there. I'm sure we can't hear, but he like made stuff, and this. I'm like, man, it's just cool. So I. You know, I would love to. I gotta get back in shape. He would, love, would love to. to. <laughs> okay, so cosplayers out there, hello. Let's mm -hmm. get Susie and John into some cosplays, and then the three of us can do a cosplay shoot together. That'd be fun. That'd Are be you really kidding cool. me? That would be amazing. There's a female Barrett, Aaliyah. She did a cosplay. I've seen I saw that. Oh my gorgeous. That's so good. <sighs> Stunning. They're, they're, both them, they're, they're, Phil and Aaliyah, they're they're a great couple. I mean, just they cosplay. He did Tifa. And she did bear it. I love it. So I love so a gender bang cosplay so much. They're so good. <laughs> okay. So streamly.com slash FF7 remake, get your prints. And then John is doing his next left live signing right after lunch. Mm -hmm. 30 minutes from now-ish. And where is Ish. that going to be live? Is that on your Instagram? I'm, I'm going to be on whatever this, this uh, streamly thing is. <laughs> yes. Yeah, for but so the what platform I'm they can find you on, I'm pretty sure is Instagram. It's gonna be Instagram Live, and that is information that is, is on Streamly's his Streamly page. Yes, yes. it's on my Streamly page. Yes, and Susie, Thank when's you. your signing? Um, well, so I actually because um, I have a joint print which I just announced earlier today. I saw it by the me. way on your Twitter. I think it's yeah. so pretty. I'm yeah. gonna be on a YouTube channel for Streamly. I was just talking. Oh, okay. It's a YouTube okay. channel. Okay, YouTube perfect. YouTube. Yeah, that'll be on John's Streamly page. The link will be there so you can see where he's gonna do the live. Yeah. Sorry, Susie, the print, oh, the dual print. Yes, yes, the the dual print with Alex Lee, the voice of Sonan, um, and Yuffie. So we we still need to nail down a date, but probably in September because Alex Lee is an extremely busy individual. But we are hoping to As are you. together. <laughs> oh, that would be so fun for you to go live together. Yeah, yeah. So if you're interested, hop on over to the shop and it's there. So yay. Cool. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Cool. I love it. Okay, then we're going to end the stream there. Thank you both for hanging out with me today. I hope everyone has a good rest of the day. And I hope, John, your signing today goes well. I do yes, too. John. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Just seeing y'all. It was so live, fun. But it'll happen soon. That brings us to the end of the Final Fantasy VII Remake voice cast Q&A. I always wish there were more time when I hang out with Susie and John. I hope there's going to be more of this. If you want to see more, please leave a comment below. And please do remember, if you'd like to visit the Streamly site to see what prints are available, to order one so that you can get it signed live by one of the three of us, visit streamly.com FF7 Remake, and that is the number seven or just click the link in the description below. As for this video, if you enjoyed it, please like it. If you'd like to share it, that would be wonderful too. And of course, please remember to subscribe to this channel, Strange Rebel Gaming, so you don't miss the next video. There's more Life is Strange too. There's more Final Fantasy VII Remake coming your way as well. And uh, yeah, just lots of good fun stuff coming up on the channel. So subscribe if you'd like to stay up to date. That's all, I love you all.